In this tutorial, we're going to go over the remote access screen in Internet Explorer. Uh, this screen is very similar to the main screen of the actual DVR software. You've got your, your PTZ controls here. So, for instance, if camera one, we'll highlight it here. If camera one were a PTZ camera, we would click it to highlight it, and you'll see a red border surround that square and then you would use these controls they look a little bit different here from what from what's presented in the actual DVR software but um, you would use these buttons to control it um, each square each square just represents a stream of video a stream of live video coming from the actual DVR streaming streaming across the internet um, you can view a maximum of 16 cameras at once so if you have a 24 or a 32 camera system you you will only be able to view the first 16 cameras initially um, if you want to view cameras 17 through 32 you'll have to first stop the the live video stream coming in from one of the existing cameras and and essentially swap that that video with one of the cameras from 17 through 32 for instance uh, right now we've got nine screens up so obviously we 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 can't see cameras 10 through 16 if if I want to see the live video coming from camera 10 what I can do I can go over here to camera one select it so that it's highlighted in red right click on it select stop now this square is free for me to choose which camera I want to stream video from so I'll go over here to this column and you'll see right here when there's a little gray box here that basically means that the video has been stopped for camera one and I can go down here where you see there's a little gray box next to camera 10 which obviously we can't view because there are only nine squares here but since I, I, I selected the first square that represents camera one, I stopped the live video stream. Now I can stream the video from camera 10. So I'm going to go over here and click camera 10. And you'll see that that gray square is going to turn into a play symbol. And now the video from camera 10 is streaming to this first square here. So right now we have video from camera 10 two three four five six seven eight nine and we can continue this process we could go here to the second square it highlights in red you can right click select stop now we see a gray square is next to camera two if we want we can go here to camera 11 click on it and now the gray square turns into a play symbol and now the live video from camera 11 is streaming to this box so that's how you get around the the limitations within this screen you you have to uh, you have to stop video sometimes in order to view video coming from a different camera if you don't have enough screens available uh, this this typically is something that you take advantage of when you have more than 16 cameras because you 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 do have the capability of viewing up to 16 at a time so that's how you view live video but let's say for instance you'd like to view video that has been previously recorded let's say something you know an incident occurred yesterday and you know that that incident occurred in the vicinity of camera <clears throat> excuse me of camera number one what you would do you go to the square you go to one of the squares you could choose any of the squares actually and again you're gonna right click and select stop and that clears this square now at this point you can go to the right column here and you can right click on any one of the cameras it doesn't matter if the camera is currently playing video or if the video has been stopped but in this instance let's say let's say we'll just say camera one uh, we'll go over here to camera one right click on it and select remote file you're gonna get a menu a window that pops up with with a calendar and you can choose the date that 
that you want to view previously recorded footage from. So in this example, we'll go to yesterday. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And then under camera one, you'll see a video file for every one of the hours in the day that there's recorded footage for. Now for camera one on the particular day that we chose, it was set up for continuous recording. So there are 24 files here. There are 24 files here, one for each hour of the day. Because you're streaming this video, you can't fast forward and rewind it. You can only start playback from the top of an hour. So we can you know, click on the first hour and it'll start playing back footage from the top of that hour. And then you can maybe jump to the top of hour four and start, I'm sorry, before you can do that, before you can jump to another hour, you have to stop the footage again. So if you, if you start the footage from, if you choose the top of hour one, and then you decide, well, the incident didn't occur in the first hour, I wanna check you know, hour four to see if it occurred there. You have to stop the footage. You have to right click and select stop again. And then you come over here and click on hour four and you'll see the little play symbol there and now now the footage that was recorded to the hard drive for that particular hour is going to stream to this box so you can mix and match you can mix and match footage you can you can view previously recorded footage along with live video um, it's up to you it's, it's up to you how you use each one of the boxes that are on this screen you can assign them to recorded video or to live live cameras live video and that's pretty much it you you can also you can also change the the screen configuration I just changed it to 16 and this is 9 uh, you do have that flexibility here as well and that concludes this tutorial